Yo, check this out, baby. You watching the Source TV on the Source.com. This is the Chalk Boy One to Pete Rock. I met Nas through a friend of mine, Lars Professor. You know, he kind of introduced him to everybody. So I think um, if you ask any other producer that question, they'll tell you the same if they're not from Queens. You know? We met in Queens. I was at probably hanging around with Lars Professor out there a lot. And um, that's, you know, you know, I was always riding around Queens meeting everybody. So I met uh, Nas like that, you know. I heard that verse. I heard that that I heard that snuffing Jesus line. That's that's what caught my attention. How me and Nas came about to do The World Is Yours was we basically mapped it out in my basement. You know what I'm saying? Um you know, came up with the ideas and we went through a couple of beats before we found that one. And um when he hears a beats he likes, he starts to bop and, you know, he's very quiet and then he's you know, doing this, so which means either he's thinking of an idea or, you know, he's onto it, like he likes the beat. And then the ideas came, and <clears throat> he wanted me to sing the hook to The World Is Yours, and um, don't ask me how I did it, but it, 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 it worked out, you know. I'm glad it did. I'm glad that it worked out for him. It was most important that he liked it more than anything. My reaction when I heard the final song, I was blown away, you know what I mean? Because um, there was a few heads in the in the session when I was mixing it down in uh, Battery Studios. And uh, in Battery Studios is the same building where Jive Zamba used to be. So, you know, you had DJ Premier in the room when I'm doing scratches on it. And you had Lars Professor in the room and a few other people there. Um, and it was like, just creating magic in the mix, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did a one take, did one take with the scratches. And, you know, Nas is an easy person to work with because you're never really worried about what he's going to say. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know, want to make sure that he's satisfied with, with, with what he's getting and he likes it and so forth. So, well, but that was a one of the key moments I remember besides being in my basement was mixing the song in the studio. I was working with Will Smith and at the time, um, so many people, you know. My, my R.I.P. to my cousin Heavy D. Rest in peace to Guru. Rest in peace to Big Al. You know, you know. I was, those were some of my compadres. I was, I was rocking with too. Other than Nas, um, the difference is um, that you're more excited about making something for this artist. Oh man, what is he gonna say? Over my beat, oh, wow, he's, you know, um, watching Gandhi sitting back, wait, what? wait, 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 don't do that, don't, don't get me on film, up. you know, you're always, like, excited, you know, to work with him, you know, because he's such a great artist, and his rhymes is like a movie, when you spitting it, you could visually see, damn near, you know what I mean, him and Slick Rick, uh, you know, I'm good at that. That's really a difficult question when that album is such a classic. You can't pick just one song. And I'm not, you know, the egotistical type, but mine's is always going to be one of them. And then um, Life's a Bitch, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, AZ and Nas, they make, they're like perfect match on a song. You know what I'm saying? And ever since that song, you always wanted to hear them too on another song. Give me, oh, give me. Nas nice is singing on the hook. Give me what you can't pick back, back, because you knew that. Just give me, why don't you give me the world? You remember that? You remember that joint on AZ album? Give Me Yours was the name of the song. Number one hip hop album is great lyricists. You know, like when he came out with that album, it set so much trend. You know, people talked continuously about Illmatic. It was just like, you know, how can you top? And yeah, they say your first album is always your best. So when people say, you know, expect you to top your first album with your second album, that never works. It just doesn't. You know, when you make a classic, to say make something better or close to it, no, you just got to do what you gotta do, how it comes out of you, it comes out of you, you know what I mean? People don't understand that, that, um, you know, you can't 
match um, Illmatic by making a new album, saying, "Okay, I'm gonna make a life of a bitch record. I'm gonna make this." You you could you could try, you know, and you could come a little bit close to it, but it will never be topped. Like that's just like somebody telling me to make a better version of Troy. It can't be done. <laughs>